Let's get into the giant mailbag. What crazy thing did City, City. do this week? It's time for Mattress Running the Numbers. Ready for the main event? The main event. Frequent Miler on the air starts now. Today's main event, where to find hidden award flights. Sometimes you're looking for your those award flights. Uh, maybe you want to fly international live flat with your family to Europe or Asia or somewhere and you just can't find anything, we're gonna tell you where to look that you might not have thought of because there are ways out there to get awards that uh, are pretty well hidden. Like a lot of people don't know about these opportunities. Yeah, for sure. And you know, a lot of times it's just a matter of knowing where to look. You know, If you don't have a map, it's hard to find something, but hopefully today we'll give you at least a little bit of a map to find that hidden treasure. But before we do, remember that you can always find the timestamps in the show notes. So if you want to find a specific section of the show, you can always scroll into those show notes and, and skip around or ahead or behind or go back to something later on. And wherever you're listening to this or watching the show, don't forget to like it, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, some feedback. We always appreciate all of those things. Let's drag out this week's giant mailbag. Yeah, today's giant mail. We've got two pieces of giant mail. First in is from Larry in NYC. Hey, Larry, it's been a while. Um, <laughs> Larry says, in last week's question of the week segment, you discussed whether hotels booked via Advantage Hotels, which is A's booking platform that gives uh, miles and loyalty points, uh, sometimes lots of them when you book hotels through that platform, that uh, you discuss whether hotels booked via Advantage Hotels for uh, would post on the purchase date or the checkout date of the stay. You had both guessed that they would post on the checkout date, but were surprised that they post on the purchase date. But that's not correct. Advantage Hotels credit with an activity date of the check-in date at the hotel. A stay that begins in February and ends in March would post in February and count towards the previous year's loyalty point total. And another person chimed in saying, yeah, that's what I found too. Well, Larry's right, and so are we. <laughs> so are we? Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, we're talking about two different things because ah. Larry's talking about the Advantage Hotels and I responded to this uh, in our Facebook group, but not on the blog and I should have done it there as well. Um, Larry's talking about Advantage Hotels, which is not what I was talking about. I was talking about the Advantage Shopping Portal. There's a bunch of different ways and Greg has written a post about a bunch of different ways to book hotels and earn American Airlines points, uh, you know, miles and loyalty points. And so we were talking about the Advantage Shopping Portal, where you go to AdvantageShopping.com and you click through and you go to Marriott, for instance, and you book directly with Marriott after clicking through the link from the Advantage Shopping Portal for, say, three miles per dollar or directly with IHG, et cetera. And so when you do that, we've discovered that you get the miles based on the booking date. However, what Larry's talking about is booking via Advantage Hotels, which is like American's third party online travel agency where you're booking through them. And so it's not a direct booking with Marriott or IHG or whatever. It's a booking through, right. I guess, Rocket Miles, right? It's like a white labeled Rocket Miles or something. I think so, so, yeah. So it, that's a different situation. And it was really interesting to know that it's handled differently that way because Larry wasn't the only person who reached out with this piece of feedback. There were a couple other people that said the same thing, uh, that it was actually the check out date that they got their miles credited. But again, check I think that's date. true. Check in date, sorry, check in date. But again, that I think was contingent on booking through Advantage Hotels rather right. than booking through the shopping portal, which is what we were talking about. So it is right. confusing and it's interesting to know that they credit in different times. And I guess you might want to keep that in mind, depending on when you're booking your hotel stay, you know, which year you want to earn your points in or which time period you want to earn your points in, you know, pick the right way to book your hotel to fit your right. needs. Right, right. You know, I find this fascinating because it, it opens up a brand new way that I would have never thought of to do a last minute mileage run. So let's say you get to the end of American Airlines elite status year, which ends at the end of February each year uh, for the following 12 months. Um, and so you're you're near the very end of February. You realize you're, I don't know, make up a number, 3,000 loyalty points short uh, of whatever your target is for elite status. You could then go find a hotel where you check in on the last day of February. So you could literally do this probably <laughs> on the very last day of February if you had to. 
uh, as long as you could actually go check in or whatever um <laughs> and uh and 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 book you know a stay that's uh either expensive enough or, or long enough, uh, to, uh, get you the, the needed points. So anyway, I, I find that, uh, really, uh, <laughs> fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It absolutely is fascinating. And it was interesting because I, like, I didn't even cross my mind that there were multiple ways to book hotels and earn advantage loyalty points and miles sure. at the time we were talking about it, but it totally makes sense that, that there are different ways. And so they might credit differently, but that's not the only piece of giant mail this week, right? No, no. We we also have uh, some giant mail from Divium who wrote, hi, Greg, Nick and FM team. I'm a big fan of all that you do. Always appreciate your analysis, insightful posts, and my favorite, the Frequent Miler on the Air podcast that I watch on YouTube literally the moment it drops. <laughs> on the last couple of episodes, I noticed that you are not doing the mattress running the numbers segment. Any particular reason? That and Card Talk are my two favorite segments as I get to learn which deals are hot, juicy, and worth taking advantage of, and which ones are lemons to stay away from. Please, Bring back that segment. Thanks for all you do. Well, that's an interesting piece of feedback. I'm 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 happy to hear that you enjoy that segment. And we enjoy that segment too. Why haven't we done it, Craig? Yeah. So, you know, each uh each week, it's not that we discontinued it. It's right. just that each week we look at what's happening in the points and miles world. And if there are uh hotel you know, opportunities that look like they would be a good fit for the mattress running segment, then we, you know, then we, we slot it in. If we don't see anything particularly uh, exciting, um, then we, then we skip it. And so, uh, yes, we will bring it back just for you, Divish. <laughs> as as Divium, soon as, Divium, sorry. As, as soon as some loyalty program brings back a promotion that's worth discussing because that's been the problem. Like, right. There just hasn't been anything that has even looked good enough to talk about. I mean, there've been some promotions like Wyndham had the minor league baseball thing this week that Stephen Pepper wrote about great use of Wyndham points. If you're interested in minor league baseball, I booked one where you could become the announcer for the, you know, play ball announcer for one of the minor league games. So uh, there were definitely some cool things in there, but that's not really a mattress running the numbers because it's not something you're doing to earn points. And you know, the match running the numbers, the idea is, you know, is this promotion so good that you should do it even if you don't need to do it. So right, we haven't right. seen anything quite like that uh, lately. And so on that note, let's move on to mattress running the numbers. Yeah. Uh, so this this week for mattress running the numbers, we're gonna skip it. We didn't see anything that interesting this week. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> All right. So then let's let's jump right forward into this week's card talk. So for card talk this week, what do you have up, Craig? All right. First up, and I'm gonna let you talk about this one, oh, Nick. Yeah. Is uh, there's a change to the platinum consumer cards uh, coming up? What's going on there? Yeah, sadly for a lot of people, the Platinum Consumer Card, well, this isn't the sad part. As you hopefully know, the Platinum, the Consumer Amex Platinum Card, I'm not talking about the Delta Platinum, but just the Amex Platinum or the Schwab Platinum or Morgan Stanley Platinum, which we've talked about on previous shows, has a digital entertainment credit up to $240 per year. You have to enroll in it, and then it's doled out $20 a month if you're spending on eligible services. And so they have a list of eligible services that includes a bunch of stuff that a lot of people like. One of those things has been SiriusXM, but... Unfortunately, thanks to an eagle-eyed reader named Whitney, uh, we found that on the most recent statement, it shows that Amex is dropping SiriusXM from the digital entertainment credit on May 8th. So any charges for SiriusXM on or after May 8th will no longer qualify to trigger that digital entertainment credit. So if you've been charging your SiriusXM to your Amex Platinum card, know that you're not going to get it credited after May 8th. Yeah, so that's a bummer for SiriusXM fans. I'm hoping that this means that they'll bring something else in that's that's interesting to a lot of people, maybe to more people than SiriusXM was. I, you know, who knows if that'll actually happen, but that's that's my hope there. Um, as an aside, this is such an aside, but I'm so sick of the fact that when we talk about the platinum card, we have to constantly explain that we're not talking about the Delta platinum card, and right. I'm just realizing that. Delta and Amex had an opportunity recently. They overhauled their cards. They could have renamed their gold and platinum cards. And here's why they should have. Besides, besides the confusion with the Amex platinum cards being named the same as the 
Delta Amex Platinum card. Um, besides that confusion, those names, gold and platinum, also overlap with Delta's elite status thresholds, <laughs> gold and platinum. And I've actually seen, I've witnessed at the airport someone being told, oh, sorry, you can't you can't do this for free unless you have gold status. And then someone whipping out their gold Delta card and say, I do have gold status. Look. And <laughs> so why Delta didn't see this as an opportunity to get out of that, you know, confusion and right. just rename those dumb cards. I don't understand, but uh, all right. So doesn't a doesn't make a lot of out. sense. Doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> the, you know, the one other point I want to make about serious, bring it back to serious for a second, seriously, uh, <laughs> is <laughs> at least one reader commented, and and this one uh, I thought was worth a highlight. At least one reader commented to say that they recently gave up the chance for a good deal on an annual renewal in order to switch to monthly billing because of this credit, because the credit is a $20 a month credit. Yeah. And so they switched to monthly billing for this credit. And now, of course, obviously, they're not going to get that credit anymore. And so that's annoying because a lot of these, you know, all the various services got to be on monthly billing for them to in order to get the credits from Amex. But then, of course, you know, you're giving up a better deal you could get an annual and so it is kind of annoying to have to do that with service and switch back and forth because who knows what they're going to drop next i mean i don't, don't imagine disney is going to go next but if it did i could see people being annoyed that oh man i could have renewed it such and such a price and instead i'm now on this monthly deal and i gotta re-up it you know the annual and blah blah, blah. it's annoying it's annoying mx it keep it consistent really annoying uh i i expect that if you called sirius xm and said that you wanted yeah. to cancel they'd offer you a deal at least as good as what you saw that you gave up but Probably. that's just my expectation i haven't tried yeah it. <laughs> right all right but that's not it for this week's card talk no for this week's no. card talk there is a huge offer that's Maybe still out there, right? Sort of still out there in a way. Um, so we had posted on the blog a, a link uh, about a week or so ago uh, for a business platinum card, an Amex business platinum card, 250,000 point bonus offer. It does. It requires $15,000 spend in three months. So that's hefty, but still $250,000 is absolutely huge. Points, 250,000 points. Oh yeah, so two hundred fifty thousand right. dollars, which oh, is shoot. also all right. huge. Well, it's not that big after all. Also <laughs> huge. <laughs> <laughs> but let's be clear, MX is not giving you two hundred fifty thousand oh, dollars before the compliance team comes at me, Greg. I totally. Why did I? Why did I try so hard for this offer? <laughs> no. Uh, yes, I misspoke. Obviously, two hundred fifty thousand points after uh, fifteen thousand dollars spent in three months. That the link that was available briefly uh, died uh, pretty quickly. But uh, a blog called Miles Earn and Burn uh, has reported on several ways to try to get that offer to show up. And uh, a number of people have reported, including in our Frequent Miler Insiders group, success in getting the 250,000 point offer to show up. And uh, the basic steps I'm going to go real quickly is um, to connect your VPN as if you're in Dallas or Denver. I have no idea why those two cities, but there you go. Um, to put your browser in private or incognito mode, uh, then to search uh, within that incognito browser for American Express Business Platinum, and then click on the resulting link to Amex. And if you're lucky, uh, you'll see a 190,000 point offer come up. When you do those those steps, I I tried this before the show and first first time through, one hundred ninety thousand point offer showed up, which is pretty darn good in its own right. Um, and then the instructions are to wait for that offer to expire and then uh, automatically reload. And and sometimes when that happens, you'll see the two hundred fifty thousand point offer. It's possible even before that to see the two hundred two hundred fifty thousand point offer apparently, but. That's the sequence that uh, some people have had success with. I did not, um, in my brief experiment, I did not see the 250,000 point uh, offer, but I believe it's worth trying again and again. When we've had other things like this, sometimes you have to try many, many times. Sometimes you have to try with different browsers for some reason. I've only tried with one browser so far with the Chrome browser. Um, but it's probably worth trying with the Brave browser, with the Firefox, with Edge, and so on. And uh, yeah, and keep trying. I've, I've had things like this work where 
in one browser, even though whatever I was looking for didn't come up, I just hit refresh and refresh and refresh and eventually it did. So it, it's worth a try. And when Greg says to wait for it to expire, it takes about 20 minutes for the page to expire. So you have to bring it up and then wait. And eventually it'll pop up a message saying it's going to expire soon. Do you want to let it expire kind of a thing or you want to continue and just leave it alone. And then after about 20 minutes, it'll shape, it'll come up with a message that says this page has expired. And I think you actually have to click it, at least in my experience, in order to get it to excuse me to reload. But um, but yeah, and the whole VPN thing for some odd reason, that's also you know, done wonders now and then before. So, um, so, you know, all good tips there. And in terms of browsers, by the way, Greg mentioned a few, there are so many web browsers. I didn't even realize how many web browsers that there still are that, you know, different people produce. So, I mean, most people probably know Chrome and Edge because it comes on your computer. I'm guessing a lot of people know Firefox and Safari because it comes on Mac. But then uh, you mentioned Brave and there's Cake and there's uh, I think uh, DuckDuckGo or something. There's Opera, there's Vivaldi. There, I mean, there's tons of different browsers. So you can go look up different web browsers and, and try some new ones because some of them seem to be more helpful for these things, it seems. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's card talk, I think. And that brings us to something really crazy. What yeah. crazy thing did today's today's crazy thing is brought to you by Anita, formerly the frequent miler laboratory manager. Uh, so people might not know on on our blog, we used to have a uh, page called the frequent miler laboratory uh, where we uh, would collate uh, experiments people would do mostly with buying uh, gift cards through portals and things like that and over time like um, fewer and fewer of those opportunities worked and so we we, we let that uh, go away but for a while Anita was doing the work of um, of actually uh, keeping that up to date uh, and uh, so a belated uh, thanks to her for for that work in the past. Yeah, um, thank but... you for me too, because I uh, that really was helpful for years. When I first got into this before I worked for Craig, I used that laboratory all the time. So thank you, Anita. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so Anita had a crazy experience. She says, I've been splitting time between San Francisco and Kansas City for the last six months and have been flying back and forth mostly on United flights booked with Turkish miles and smiles. So uh, we've talked about that on the show many times. Uh, she says no issues other than uh, the occasional weird 4 a.m. phone call from Turkish to go over baggage rules, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Always fun. Oh, Always boy. fun when you're dealing with Turkish. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> Today, I was checked in for my San Francisco to uh, MCI flight. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, checked my bags at... I'm sorry, you said Kansas City. Is that what yeah. you said? Yeah, that's what um, MCI is, yeah. Yep. People she was familiar. checked in for her San Francisco to Kansas City flight, checked checked my bags at airport with no issue. So, all right, so just to recap, she'd already checked in. She had a boarding pass. She checked her bags, no problem. But at boarding was denied because a, a problem with my ticket. Um. The gate agent could not explain the problem other than saying repeatedly, it says it is supposed to be a paper ticket. <laughs> what? what? Um, she made me wait until everyone else had boarded, closed the doors, and then started working on fixing, and she put that in quotes, whatever was wrong with the ticket. Eventually, she rebooked me for the same flight the next day. I asked how come this issue wasn't caught at check-in or when I was checking bags, and she said that it can't be seen except at the gate. What? <laughs> she couldn't simply print me a paper ticket, she said. She didn't explain how she resolved the issue. I asked her how I could be sure to the next day's rebooked flight or any future flights are without issue, and she said I can call United and ask if my ticket is okay. <laughs> what? what? Can you even imagine that? Like... As as if any uh, United uh, agent right. would be like would have, oh. would have any idea or right. look would at have it any like, idea yeah. at all. I mean, clearly, if if United agents could tell, they wouldn't have checked her bags. Uh, right, right. Anyway, um, she says it was surreal. My bags are on their way to Kansas City right now. Remember, she had already checked her bags. I hope I catch up with them eventually. And then the next day she emailed me, luckily the second flight worked and my bags were waiting for me in Kansas City. It was one of the weirdest travel experiences I've ever had. 
And then a later follow-up from Anita says, uh, United told me earlier this evening they were giving me $150 credit. I explained my loss of income and my expenses were at least $220 and asked for $450. They said $250 is the maximum they can offer and deposited that into my account. So just as an aside, I think that's interesting that they have a set maximum for how much they can offer when a weird Turkish Airlines book <laughs> like gets denied at boarding. But anyway, they have that. They have that. There's um, a manual for that. <laughs> <laughs> and she says there was no explanation offered about what happened, but they're they're quite apologetic. So United was apologetic. So, um, so yeah, that's, crazy, that's, crazy, crazy. That's definitely crazy. I haven't heard anything. I've heard lots of you know stories of various things that have gone wrong with Turkish booked tickets. You know, it's obviously as we've talked about before, not a perfect program. Uh, I've had success with all of the United flights I've taken, and it sounds like. Anita's taken quite a few that have been fine, uh, but I have heard occasional issues. Nothing like this. This is the weirdest thing by far. Uh, the thing that strikes me as particularly weird is that if this was entirely on Turkish, I can't imagine United would have given her any credit, right? Like, would United be extending, right. the, being apologetic and offering the credit rather than just telling her to pound sand and go call Turkish? Uh, I have to feel like something went wrong on United's end here and they know it. Well, I think it definitely went wrong in United's side because, yeah, I mean, Turkish might have done something wrong, but United accepted whatever they did enough to check her bags <laughs> in and to give her a boarding pass. Yeah. So those two things, you know, it's unexcusable. Right. To let someone into the airport, check their bags, and then not let them on the flight. And be like, oh, no, you don't have a ticket for this. I mean, I I, I would think that that's a security issue, sending somebody's bags without <laughs> them, right? Like, that doesn't have a valid ticket for the Call flight, Homeland right? Security like, on them. I mean, yeah, come on. That yeah. uh, seems, seems crazy. seems crazy that United uh, would get themselves into that. I, it, like, there are things that can go wrong. Like, for instance, if there's a schedule change, I think the ticket needs to get reissued and, you know, getting Turkish to reissue it, to, I mean, to issue a ticket is hard enough reissuing it. Yeah, that could be a problem. So, uh, yeah. so uh, like something like that could have gone wrong, but then I would not expect her to be able to check in and drop bags. Like, that's just, that's nuts. Sorry you had to deal with that, Anita. That's too bad. But uh, but also good to know that United was able to fix it, I guess. And Yeah, you know, and... Thanks for providing us a great uh, What Crazy Thanks segment. All right, right. That was entertaining for all of us. We appreciate it, Anita. <laughs> Thanks for taking <laughs> one for the team. All right, next up is award talk. Let's talk about awards this week. So first up, we've got some bad news, although we all knew it was coming, so it's not necessarily surprising bad news. Just, you know, now we finally know that Hyatt is losing SLH, Small Luxury Hotels of the World, as of May 15th, although that's almost a little misleading in the sense that they've kind of already lost them for all intents and purposes, because I think you can't book them anymore for stays beyond May 15th. So if you have an SLH stay that you'd like to book between now and May 15th, you can book that using your points or your money through Hyatt. But after May 15th, I don't think you can book anything anymore with SLH. Right. Your stays that are already booked will be honored, but you're not going to get free breakfast and the upgrade and all the benefits that you would have expected by booking through Hyatt. And you won't right. get any and Hyatt Elite Night credit. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to mention that. Sorry. So, yeah, I, I would not suggest um, I, I canceled some. I had some reservations post May 15th. I canceled those already. Um, you know, it's just not something um, that, yes. I mean, if it's an incredible deal that, you know, I could see keeping it. And in my case, like it was sort of borderline good use of, of Hyatt points, but if I'm not going to get the benefits that were guaranteed with Hyatt and not going to get elite credit, it wasn't worth it for me in this case. Um, but in some cases where it's such a great deal, you might want to keep that reservation. Why not? Yeah. You know, I think that SLH has some properties that are so terrific that, you know, if you booked the place because it's a fantastic hotel and you were getting an amazing deal on points, well, I mean, why wouldn't you keep that? I guess, um, you know, if you have to pay for breakfast, but you didn't pay for anything else, it's, you know, uh, not the end of the world. So I have some that I haven't canceled yet, but uh, you know, like Greg said, in at least one of those cases, it's marginal as to whether that's going to be a much better deal than my other options. So I may look to cancel that too. And if you want to cancel one of these, 
I would recommend canceling it before May 15th, because before May 15th, you should be able to cancel through Hyatt and get your points back. It should be very easy. After May 15th, you're going to have to call SLH uh, or email a special email address. And so probably canceling the stay itself will be smooth and frictionless, but getting your points back, I assume will not be smooth and quick and frictionless. So if you're going to want to be able to, you know, use your points immediately for something else and consider making a decision before May 15th. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. All right. That, that All right. Think, right. Yeah. So next up, we have a lot of we award do. talk we to do. talk about today. Mm -hmm. um, next up, the uh, new Alaska award chart has started slowly rolling out. It's a, the pieces of it have gone live already, uh, and it's, it's expected to be complete by March 31st. Uh, as an as a reminder about what's happening, uh, Alaska used to have separate award charts for each of their partners, and some were incredible deals, and some were incredibly bad deals. Um, now what they're going to is a single collection of award charts. Um, and for their, for booking with partners, the new award charts are very, very similar to Air Canada Aeroplans award charts, where, uh, they're a combination of zone based awards, uh, meaning like, uh, you go to a different award chart if you want to fly to Europe than if you want to fly to Asia, for example, but a combination of those zone based awards and distance space. So within each of those Europe or Asia or whatever, uh, award charts, uh, you're going to pay more the, the further distance your awards are for your flights are for, um, there are some key differences uh, from Aeroplan. Um, for one, uh, just like Aeroplan, you get you can add a stopover on a one-way award, but unlike Aeroplan, you don't have to pay more for it. Aeroplan charges 5,000 more points for that. So that's a really nice feature of Alaska's award charts. Um, you, you Also with Alaska, uh, actually, let me put it another way. With Aeroplan, you do have the option if you want refundable, freely changeable awards, you can pay more points to get, get that award. But Alaska, you get that ability just with the regular award chart. You know, when when you book an award, uh, there's no change fees. Um, there's only about a $15 fee that's non-refundable if you cancel. Um, the uh, so, so, you know, so the bad news is people are going to be losing out on some smoking hot, incredible deals that used to be there for certain partners. Um, the good news is, is this should be more broadly applicable to, to, uh, booking awards in general across the world, wherever you're going. Um, the bad news or the other bad news is that we don't yet have the ability to book mixed partner awards. So you can't book you know, a flight where you're flying, uh, let's say, American Airlines to LA and then uh, Japan Airlines to Japan. Um, and until we have that, I, I think it's going to continue to be of sort of limited use uh, in a lot of ways. But once we get that, this is going to be a really solid general purpose program for booking awards, I think. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it's much more broadly useful. You know, I enjoyed the theoretical sweet spots that Alaska always had. And I, I was able to take advantage of a couple of them, but I say theoretical because over time they really became so difficult to find that they, they sounded awesome on paper, but in practice they weren't useful for very many people anymore. So I totally agree with you. I think that this is a much more broadly useful chart in general. It's, certainly somewhat disappointing uh, to the people that were had the flexibility and uh, you know an ability to hunt out those unicorn sort of awards but overall i think this is a, a much better deal but like you said exactly what you said about it, it's so limited until you can book those multi-partner awards so hopefully right. that comes sooner rather than later right but that's not all the alaska news is it what else it is isn't. going on it isn't get ready for this built 
is adding Alaska or has added Alaska, I should say, Alaska mileage plan as a transfer partner. So you can now transfer your built rewards points to Alaska mileage plan one to one, just like all of their other partners. So that's an awesome development for people that have built rewards points and you know or and or earn built rewards points. That's I think that's good news to pick pick up another major partner like that, uh, another One World partner, major U.S. program, all awesome stuff there. And, and, and our program, and that, yeah, go I'm ahead. sorry, I was just going to add in, and it's notable that no other transfer old points program uh, that does one-to-one -one transfers transfers to Alaska. Yes, absolutely. And that, that was, yes, that's the last key part of that. This week, we also found out that Built is going to be losing American Airlines as a transfer partner in June. And so that's a hit in the sense that they were the only transferable currency that transferred one-to-one -to, -one to American Airlines. So they had that as a unique partnership for a long time. And American Airlines is obviously useful for a lot of people. So certainly it had a, you know its usefulness, particularly for people who weren't able to get American Airlines credit cards. This is a great way to earn American Airlines miles. And unfortunately, that's going away in June. Yeah, yeah, I'm really sad to see that. Uh, I mean, it probably doesn't impact me personally too much because um, with with the great transfer bonuses they've been running every couple months, uh, I would rather use built points for those big transfer bonuses. And I didn't expect to ever see a big transfer bonus to American Airlines, so um, so so it's not that much of a loss in that way. But for, I think for a lot of people who uh, care a lot about American Airlines miles and uh, who have been using built as like the best way to earn them, uh, they're going to be really disappointed. Uh, and, you know, I, I think that probably a big motivator for uh, from American Airlines side is probably the fact that. Um, they might have realized that people were finding that the built card was a better way to earn American Airlines miles <laughs> than an American Airlines credit card. And of course, they would rather people use American Airlines credit cards. So I, I suspect that that's a big factor there. You Another think possibility. So? You think there's enough people using built over American Airlines credit cards to be a blip on the radar for American? Well, that's a, that's I guess that's a good question. I it, it might be more the optics of it that of people saying, well, now why should I spend over on that card than this card? Um, but the other, the, another, and this is all speculation, but another possibility is that it's simply, uh, you know, when built added American, uh, they may have done so despite American charging an unbelievable amount for the miles when they do those transfers. Mm -hmm. And they might've done that because they knew they had to do something really special to get on people's radar. Uh, and maybe now that they have Alaska, maybe they feel like, okay, we don't, we don't keep having to have to keep bleeding that money uh, for people transferring to American uh, because there's another one world alternative that's pretty good. I have to imagine that American you know, is renegotiating their contracts for their credit cards and, like you said, wanted too much for their miles and or wanted to, you know, have some leverage in order to. Further discussions, who knows, maybe they're looking to get into a transferable currency situation with City. Everybody's always speculated about that. And so, you know, maybe this exiting this was something they had to do in order to protect their bigger interests. So, uh, you know, that all of those things make sense to me. I, I think, yes, it was a good way to earn American Airlines miles or maybe, like you said, better than their credit cards for somebody who doesn't also like doesn't value American Airlines miles and also value American Airlines elite status, because if you value right. both of those things and you probably want the american airlines credit cards presuming you, know, you can get them so i feel like it's pretty niche to narrow that down to the people who value american airlines miles enough and none of the rest of built's partners to be transferring to american only uh and you know and, and not yeah. care about earning status yeah. well. and, and sort of as you alluded to uh, another uh, another possibility of what's behind this is simply that City might be trying to get into the transfer old points thing and might be demanding exclusive uh, transfer and might say you you have to stop doing build if we're going to sign this big deal. Yeah, and, and surely and City has like, the leverage for money. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of, a lot of money there. So, so yeah, I think that kind of makes some sense. Uh, but I, it's I, it's less of a big deal to me now because they've got so many different good partners, and this Alaska thing I think is pretty hot. But uh, hopefully, we don't see more partners lost. I mean, I, I'm, I'm I think I'm surprised that things have. I guess nobody would have thought that American Airlines would have signed on to be a transferable points currency partner like 
at all to begin with, probably if you'd floated this idea before the whole thing happened. So the fact that it's lasted as long as it did is somewhat surprising, I feel like. Um, you know, hopefully though, the majority of partners stick on with it and you know, we don't lose too many more. Yeah, yeah. I still maintain that the big picture is that I, I think this is a, a, a net uh loss for um for built because the especially for the you know the they're a U.S. based company advertising U.S. consumers who are uh, who are going to look at, you know, the transfer partners that were American, United, uh, Hyatt, Hyatt uh, yeah. Marriott, you know, IHG is Mar yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, and, you know, that's appealing that it's these brands they know. Um, and now a very significant one of them is gone. And I think that's, that's true. A big hit. That's true. All right. Very good. Next up, I just quickly wanted to mention, I we talked, I don't know, last year, a while back about me upgrading a Marriott card to a Ritz card. It was actually my wife's card. Um, and I wanted to mention that I did this again. So I have an, I had an old Marriott card, a no longer available $85 Marriott card and that I wanted to upgrade to a, a Ritz card. And the same timeline that I did before worked again. So uh, what I did was I looked back at my Marriott account and I saw when my free night certificates had posted in the past. In the past couple of years, I took the date that they had posted and seven days before that date. So they had posted in previous years on, I don't know, March 13th. Uh, and so seven days before that, March 6th. I called in to upgrade to the Ritz card. And the reason I did that was because this worked out once before. So I upgraded that Marriott card to the Ritz card. And then a few days later, both the 25K certificate from the old card and the 85K certificate from the new Ritz card posted to my account. And that's significant because normally when you upgrade, I think you have to wait a year until you see the first 85K certificate. But both times I've done this have been seven days before the, the new free night certificate has historically hit that account. And both times I got both certificates. So that was a nice little added bonus on upgrading to the Ritz card. It sure is. That's great. Great mm -hmm. news there. Um, okay. And I've got a couple, uh, small, uh, Delta updates. Um, first up, if you have the Delta platinum card, which I ranted about earlier, or the Delta reserve card, then each year upon renewal, you get a companion certif certificate, uh, deposited to your account. And, uh, when Delta overhauled their credit cards recently, they made a very big positive uh, change to those companion tickets, which I think we've talked about in the show before, which is that um, now instead of being limited to working uh, in the uh, contiguous US 48 states, uh, now you can uh, use these companion tickets to add a free uh, companion plus taxes um, to anywhere in North America, Hawaii, uh, Caribbean, or Central America. And so that's such a huge upgrade. But I was disappointed to find that 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 my uh, companion tickets that were issued to me before February, when these changes happen, um, were not upgraded. Like I, they were still limited the old way. And I finally, just the other day, from when we're recording this, got a new certificate, uh, a post February one or post January thirty first certificate. And uh, I can confirm very happily that I did a search for a round trip to Hawaii and that showed up right away. I did a search for a round trip to the Caribbean and that showed up right away. So I was very excited to see that it's actually working as advertised. So just wanted to point very that nice. out. Very nice. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, the value of those things have just shot up so much higher than before. It's it's amazing. Okay. Um, the other Delta news is uh, some people might remember that there was one last chance uh, last year to uh, earn uh, MQMs, which is an old way of, of measuring your elite status progress and having those roll over to this year. Last time ever, Delta will do anything uh, like a rollover of elite uh, earnings, or at least that's what they say now. Who knows what I'll do, they'll do in the future. Um, and that uh, if you had multiple hundreds of thousands of MQMs rolled over, as my wife and I did, you can take each 100,000 MQMs rolled over and extend your current status for that many years, um, for one year per 100,000 uh, MQMs that you rolled over. Um, so I'm just bringing this up because th there's a 
uh, a nuance that I didn't know or understand before. And that is, it has to do with with your your choice benefits. When when you reach Delta Platinum status, you get to pick one choice benefit, like regional upgrade certificates, for example. And when you get to Diamond status, you get to pick three choice benefits, uh, like global upgrade certificates, where uh, there's multiple opportunities for getting about five hundred dollars, just sort of straight up. Um, and uh, the 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 thing is, I thought. I would be eligible for both those sets if I roll over my diamond to multiple years. And it turns out that not exactly. Um, what mm -hmm. what I'm going to get for rolling over diamond to multiple years is I'm going to get the three diamond choice benefits each year, but not the platinum ones because I mm -hmm. won't have. So it's, it's sort of like it it considers that I've earned diamond in a way. But not that I earned platinum along the way, which I guess makes some sense. Yeah, yeah. But um, kind of true, right? Isn't that that's actually yeah. what's happening? <laughs> that is kind of what's happening. Yeah. yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, so just a detail there. I mean, yeah. it's not a not a huge bad thing. I mean, it's great that we're getting the diamond choice benefits, which are much much more valuable than the platinum ones. Um, I would have liked to have also gotten the platinum ones, but I won't. <laughs> For sure. For sure. All right. Is that it? We, we have some more for award talk, don't we? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to talk about some um, news or information about award searching tools, tools you can use. Uh, there was news out of Point Me, which is that they partnered with American Express Membership Rewards. And the ver there's a version of Point.me that's free to anyone who has an Amex account. And uh, you can log in and use uh, the Point Me Flight Award Search tool for free, and it it will search all of the programs. Uh, it'll only search programs that are transfer partners with membership rewards with Amex membership rewards. But that's there are a lot, so that's a lot of partners. But it does mean it's not going to be searching um, what American Airlines. Uh, it will United. search Delta. It won't search United. Yeah, so there's some key ones that it won't search, but it will search uh, uh, all those others. Um, I did a uh, an update to my award search, which is the best award search tool post. And uh, in there, I have a section comparing just the free tools, including this new version of Point Me. And uh, I, I found that I still uh, prefer Pointia over... Point me by quite a bit, but there's a new one also in there called Award Tool, and both of those, their free versions, are very capable and very fast, and that's like that's one of the key things I I really like above Point Me. But also, they both offer free um, award alerts, so you can get alerted when uh, something shows up that wasn't there when you first did the search. So um, those are awesome. Another free one worth mentioning that that's uh, mentioned in there is Points Path, which is a Plug in a Chrome that when you use Google Flights, it'll just automatically show you here's the price for the here's the point price for the Delta flight or the United flight or American flight, and whether or not it suggests you should book with points or cash depending on the the prices. That seems um, particularly convenient for somebody who needs to do any positioning, right? Because you know you, mm -hmm. you may just want to know, okay, well, how much would it cost me to position to Chicago in order to get that long haul flight that I just found through a Word tool or points, yeah, or whatever the case might be. So I, yeah. I feel like that's that's useful because you can look up all the different programs that you know all of those programs at once, uh, you know, and and get an idea of the cash price also. So right, right, and it also happens that all three of those programs will give you free changes and cancellations, which are especially ha handy when you're doing. Uh, those kind of positioning flights. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's sort of very specific, but, but really nice, uh, free tool. Um, I also compared the paid tools and, um, I still liked, uh, award tool on points. You have the, of the paid versions of those, um, uh, better than, than the others for that. Um, I also posted a separate post, a comparison of what I'm calling award discovery tools. That's where you can do things like say, I just want to fly to Europe sometime this summer in business class and show me what's out there. And all and there is a lot of tools that do that or try to do that. Um, uh, but uh, I found that uh, Pointia Daydream Explorer. So that's mm -hmm. just built into Pointia. And it's actually 
they they give you full functionality from the free version of points yeah to the daydream explorer and that just worked really really well so i so i really like that um seats.arrow also can do uh those kind of things but you need to know more what you're doing to to make it work right for that um and coming up uh soon hopefully i'm going to be comparing hotel award search tools. I, I did that in the past with just two. I looked at in the past, uh, uh, max my point versus stay with points, but there's a bunch more out there. There's something called a ways there's, uh, rooms.arrow, which is brought to you by the same guy as seats.arrow. Um, and there's uh, a word tool has a hotels section as well. Um, so those are the ones that, that are on my radar. If you know of others I should be looking at, please uh, drop us a line and, and let us know that uh, I should be also looking at this other hotel award search tool. Very good. Lots of award talk today. So yeah. the, a lot of good stuff there for award talk. Should Thank goodness for the timestamps. We should, we, you know, we should move on. Greg. <laughs> we should move on. We should move on to this week's main event. Main event time, where to find hidden award flights. So uh, this happens uh, all the time, probably, to, to anyone who looks for award flights uh, regularly, that uh, you want to go to somewhere uh, at some certain time, and you're not finding the flights that you were hoping for as available as awards, or, or maybe they're just too expensive, which is even more common. Um, and so what we've done is collected a bunch of uh, opportunities where you might not have thought to look for these flights and uh, where you're you're likely to find availability more often than not. And uh, so in some cases, you're going to have to book, you may have to book positioning flights to get to, let's say, New York before flying or whatever. But um, these are things to keep in your, in your tool chest when doing award searches. For sure. So First one up off the list here that we have is Aeroplan, award space for Singapore Airlines, sometimes even better award space than via Singapore itself. And you booked something like this, right, Greg? I did. I did. I, I was struggling. I had a, a trip to Europe where we wanted to come back on a specific day. No, this is we were wanted to leave on a specific day from the U.S., and I was striking out on anything good. I mean, I, I was I was actually thinking about paying those ridiculously high uh, surcharges to fly British Airways. But um, luckily, I searched uh, from JFK and found that there was a nice uh, flight to Frankfurt on Singapore business class. It, it seems to be widely available. I checked Singapore Airlines directly to see if that flight was available, it would it was waitlisted. It wasn't available mm, to book through Singapore, available. but I could book immediately through Aeroplan, no problem at all booking it. So I separately booked a positioning flight to New York. Uh, it took me to Frankfurt, and I separately booked a positioning flight to my uh, end location. Nice, nice. That's awesome. And, you know, I've seen that a few times before where there are awards that, like you said, are waitlisted through Singapore, but available to book through Air Canada Aeroplan. It's nutty. And if you book, if you look pretty far in advance, I've often found, I've been surprised at, in fact, how much availability I've been able to find at times. Now, of course, it ebbs and flows, but sometimes I'll see lots of Singapore availability on different routes, not always only within the United States either. So it's uh, it's certainly worth taking a look at Aeroplan for those Singapore awards. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, uh, so moving on, another uh, opportunity out there is that you could book JetBlue flights with Cutter Avios. Uh, so that's a, a sort of uh, unique partnership. And the pricing for, for things like flying Mint, which is JetBlue's business class to Europe, um, it's not like the cheapest uh, ward flight to Europe you can find. I think, it, what is it, 70, 70 something thousand? 70, like 74,000 or something like that, um, about that. 70 something thousand. And, but uh, the award availability has been uh, pretty good. And uh, so that's something that you just may not have thought to even look for. And most award search tools aren't going to uh, look for that. So um, that's something that you might want to look at specifically. Yeah, I think that's a really important one to remember, specifically because of what Greg said. Availability is pretty good. So 
it's one of those things that, yeah, the price isn't great. You're not going to be like, oh my goodness, yes, I scored this amazing deal. But you might be like, oh my goodness, I scored a business class flight to Europe in the middle of the summer. Uh, you know, it, it, when you can't find something elsewhere, this is going to be a place to look because it doesn't show up anywhere easy. You have to know what you're looking for. So you're competing with far fewer people for those seats. So right. that makes it a little bit easier to find if you know how to find it. Now, if you don't know how to find it, what you need to do is go to the show notes because we'll have a link to the video that shows you exactly how to find it because we made one of those. So go to the show notes, find that link so that you can watch the video and figure out how to find and book those. Yeah. Luckily it's, it's not obvious how to use uh, this tool that we show in the video Nick mentioned, but once you uh, get set up to use it, it's actually, it's very easy to find a word space using that tool. I mean, very, very easy. Um, So that's great because if you just get on Cutter's website and search, if you happen to pick a day that there's availability, yes, you'll see it, but um, it's not going to show you like uh, multiple days at a time. So it'll be hard to hard right. to find it. Right. All right. Next up, we've got using. Uh, well, so this one, it, interestingly, I was just trying to re-verify and, and situation may have changed, but using Virgin Atlantic to book ITA. So we're talking about ITA flights, which is sort of like the new Alitalia, the new Italian national airline. You can book those flights with Virgin Atlantic miles, 75,000 miles each way from at least New York to Rome or vice versa. I can't remember. And business class. Yes, that should should qualify that. And business class between New York and Rome. If you connect onward or have a Delta connection beforehand that actually shows up via Virgin Atlantic, it's going to cost you more because you'll pay by each segment. But at any rate, this was for a long time very widely available, two seats on every flight they've been releasing. I think a lot of that has gotten booked up because I was actually taking a look uh, just a minute ago and I'm not seeing very much of it at all now. But like for months, this was available like basically all the time. So it's worth taking a look because I imagine when you're out of peak season uh, and or you know as the memory dies down that this is such an easy thing to find, you'll probably be able to find this once again so that's one at least worth checking. You have to know how to search for awards via Virgin Atlantic's website, which can sometimes be tricky, although JFK to Rome seems to work just fine. So uh, again, 75,000 points, not a fantastic price, but a good price considering the fact that you do often see wider availability on that than you do on a lot of other things. Yeah. And since Virgin is a transfer partner with everybody, uh, it's so easy to get those points uh, and to book. So 75000 yeah, we're saying it's not like the best price, but it's also, that's a solid price, I think, to pay yeah, for it's not a, a bad business price. class flight. For sure. Um, all right. Let's say you want to fly to Asia or even to New Zealand. Um, you might want to consider positioning to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> now that's, that's always something I'm willing to do, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> that's a heck of a long positioning flight, but uh, you know it could be a very nice uh, place to have a stopover for a few days. And uh, it turns out Hawaiian Airlines has very good award space to certain cities that they fly to. Uh, and I'm talking about business class award space. So uh, I've seen a lot of good award space to Tokyo, to Seoul. And to uh, and not as much, but a decent amount to Auckland. What what, um, what I haven't seen is good award space to to Sydney. Uh, I mean, there's some, but but not like I wouldn't call it good amounts. But um, yeah, Auckland, New Zealand. So there's some there's some good opportunities there with Hawaiian Air. Um, you can book those with Hawaiian miles for decent pricing. I think it's around sixty thousand points, uh, somewhere in that range for Sounds flying. Right. For example, to Seoul. Um, American Airlines actually who partners with Hawaiian, it's a little bit cheaper if you have American Airlines miles and, uh, you know, free to, uh, change and cancel and everything. So if you are flush and American, I, I think I would look there first. Um, yeah. So that's a good one. Yeah, you may, I, I, maybe you looked this up. I, I can't remember off the top of my head how it prices via Virgin Atlantic, but that's another option. You should be able to book via Virgin Atlantic on those. So I can't remember if it's a better price or not off the top of my I head. But... I haven't looked, no. Worth worth checking that if you uh you know if you if you have points that could transfer to Virgin Atlantic and or Virgin Atlantic miles also so that's another good potential option but yeah Hawaiian I like their business class so and their newer business class looks quite nice I've been in their older yeah. business class and even though that's not particularly popular I actually like it so um so anyway good flatbed uh, opportunities there next up 
Emirates. So with Emirates, you can not necessarily rely on this, but you can book a lower class of service and then it's possible to upgrade to business or first class, depending on what you're looking to do at the airport using miles. Yeah. So, uh, so supposedly, you know, for example, let's say you have your heart set on their first class, which they have a phenomenal first class product. Uh and you manage to find business class awards uh, or cash prices. Um, apparently, as long as first class is available, uh, when you get to the airport, uh, you should be able to use points to upgrade. Uh, and it's not a matter of, did they open upgrade award space? It's just that seat's there and it hasn't been sold yet. So you can do it. And so that's uh, that's a great way to do it. If you're willing to, you know, in case it does fill up, if you're willing to fly in what you originally booked. Yeah. And also probably willing to have the miles on hand, ready to rock and roll when you get to the airport. Cause you probably don't want to be sitting there on your phone, fiddling with making a transfer. Like as you ask the agent, whether or not they can upgrade <laughs> you to that. So you may, maybe, maybe not. I, I might risk it. Personally. Yeah. I, don't know. <laughs> I, I, I just happen <laughs> sitting there waiting, ready to go. Um, and be, I, also because sometimes you can upgrade before departure, you can wait list and upgrade for a little bit more in miles. So uh, it doesn't always clear though. So right. that's another opportunity. All right. Air France KLM flying blue. The tip here is just don't trust the calendar because the prices shown on the calendar are not always the low prices for the dates that you know that they indicate. They often have pricing that doesn't match the best price available on that specific date. So you really do kind of have to click day by day on their calendar and see what the lowest price is. Once you click on a day, the lowest price does light up in green as you're scrolling the list, but you have to find that, not trust the number up at the top of the list because that number is not always the best price. Yeah, yeah. And it's especially true that um, the calendar is not going to show you at all their partner awards. So if, if, if Virgin Atlantic or Delta awards are available and a better price than, than Air France Flying Blue, it's calendar is not going to show you that. Um, but apparently sometimes it's even true with Air France and KLM's own flights that the calendar <laughs> is wrong. I, I don't know. And sometimes it just seems to be like a day off or something. Um, so you, you do have to click around and that's frustrating. It is frustrating. And, you know, it reminded me of something that is only tangentially related here, but I, but it, I'll pop a quick mention in here is that uh, Marriott, oddly enough, uh, when you search for a Marriott hotel and you see the point prices in the list, it can be misleading because every now and then I've run, yeah. I just ran into this the other day again, and yep. I forgot that it even existed, that if there's a point saver rate available, it doesn't show that rate all the time in the main search results. And in fact, I found a, a St. Regis the other day that would be bookable with an 85K certificate, but you wouldn't have known it if you'd only looked at the price in the main search results. If you hadn't actually clicked through the hotel, you wouldn't have known it was actually available at a point saver rate where an 85K cert would have been usable. So, you know, just another tip that but sometimes clicking around to double check that whatever you're seeing as the headline is actually accurate is is worth a an extra click. Right, right. At least at least Marriott's site shows you uh, when you when you pick a set of dates for a city, it shows you which uh, hotels actually have awards available or not. Whereas Hyatt just shows yeah. you shows you all of them as if they're available, and then you have to <laughs> right. and you, you get all excited about booking a hotel and you click in and it says, "Sorry, there's nothing here." <laughs> <laughs> oh, nothing on, to see man. here. Yeah, all right. Thanks, Hyatt. Put the IT back in Hyatt. Come on. Right. <laughs> um, all right. Um, moving on here. Um, American Airlines, uh, Air France, KLM, Flying Blue. There's probably some other programs that do this, but uh, these are two that I'm particularly aware of. You often get much better pricing by flying to or from smaller airports, not, not the hubs. And uh, I'm often uh, with American. I'm often a benefit from this because at Detroit, it, it's a not even close to being a hub for American. And so uh, flying to or from Detroit, American often has good pricing. Um, the main downside with American is that often the first flight is to LaGuardia and the continuing flight is through <laughs> JFK, which is really annoying. Yeah, but anyway, that's, that's uh, just the way it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I often and, find this to be the case all yeah. the time. 
Yeah. Yeah. And Air France fly, uh, KLM flying blue, uh, same thing. Like if I'm booking, looking to book a flight to Paris, you, you know, you often see very high prices or to Amsterdam, but then look at flying to some small, uh, airport, uh, uh, Gothenburg, uh, Sweden, and all of a sudden the price drops way down and not a hundred percent of the time, nowhere right, near that, right. but it's, <laughs> right. it's just worth checking. And, um, tools like, uh, that, that I talked about before the, uh, daydream explorer from points. Yeah. Um, is, is a really good way of finding some of those opportunities. Like you could look, uh, you could just say like, so f that example, let's say, um, I'm looking to fly to, Paris from Detroit. Um, but I don't mind going past Paris. Uh, so, so I could, I could put into a tool like daydream Explorer. I'm going from Detroit to Europe, uh, and put as broad of a timeline as possible because, uh, what I want to do is find, uh, I just want to find air France or, or KLM flights that are sometimes cheap priced really cheaply. Um, from Detroit. And so I'll find things, you'll find things like uh, Gothenburg or wherever uh, uh, that are sometimes priced cheaply. And then you can do your search to those specific cities uh, for the time frame you're interested in and say, okay, how much is it for the time frame I really want to go? Yeah. And it's also worth, you know, on the, on your home end, considering, you know, is there another airport that is a reasonable drive for me? I just literally, right before we started recording this show, booked a flight for my sister and from an airport a little over an hour away, an American Airlines itinerary connecting to the same exact, same exact place, right? Well so said. either airport was going to Charlotte and then New York and then London, right? And from an hour away, it was a hundred thousand miles less. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it's worth checking those little airports because obviously the long haul stuff was available at whatever the cheap price was but for some reason the little connector on her home airport just happened to be far more than the one that's a little over an hour away and you know she'll be able to drive the hour and, and save the hundred thousand points so um so yeah it's definitely worth checking that out because we see all sorts of wacky stuff with that with those those programs in particular but i'm sure there are others all um, right and then we have a, a bunch of different airlines that offer better award availability to their own members than they do to partner programs right yeah, and that might sound like a duh kind of statement because <laughs> like if you look if you search like Delta or United or American, um yeah, of course they have much better award availability to their own members but but those the prices uh are ridiculous when, prices. The prices are ridiculous, <laughs> right? Um so we're not talking about that. We're talking about good award prices for their own members and so um uh, Eva Air has got to be one of the best opportunities in the in this uh, space where you want to fly business class to Asia from North America uh, and you're not finding award availability through all the usual programs you're not finding it through uh, you know booking uh, Star Alliance flights using your United miles or Air Canada miles um, even though Eva Air is a Star Alliance partner they they don't release as much award space to their partners as they do to their own members. So you can be looking at transferring points from, uh, for example, City uh, to Eva Air and a, a word space at reasonable prices, 70 something thousand, I can't remember exactly, but um, to fly to Asia uh, is widely available. So uh, that's a that's a great one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Cutter, of course, you can book with Cutter Avios or British Airways Avios. And again, you'll find better award availability in their own business class, including, including Q suites in some cases using Avios rather than using, say, American Airlines miles. So that's another one where you'll want to look directly through Cutter or through British Airways. I don't know if the availability matches up exactly between the two. Do you, do you see more or less or the I same? I don't know if it matches up exactly, although the times I've looked, they have matched. Yeah. And uh, it's very important to, to, to note that um, sometimes the taxes and fees are way, way less when booking through British Airways hmm. than booking through Cutter. So uh, it, if you find the award space through Cutter, always double check the pricing through British Airways as well, because you can move the points back and forth between those two. And uh, then you probably are going to want to book through BA. Mm -hmm. um, another one is uh, Etihad. Uh, so it's it's uh, here is a little bit less about the award availability 
in general being better for their own members, but they're actually blocking it from partners, uh, at least for, it looks like, um, beyond more than 30 days in the future, you just cannot book with any of Eddie Hod's partners, their uh, business or first class awards. And so if you want to book Eddie Hod, you're almost stuck with uh, booking with Eddie Hod Miles, although be very careful because they have horrible, 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 horrible <laughs> award uh, cancellation uh, penalties. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I talked all about, you know, talk tough game about how I wouldn't consider transferring to Etihad just, uh, you know, what last week, right? And and then, of course, I started running into a situation this week where I'm trying to plan a trip and I'm like, oh my goodness, the only airline that's coming up, the only option, like I've tried everything, I'm searching all sorts of different stuff. Only way to get four people in business class on what I was trying to do is via Etihad. <laughs> wait, 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 did you try all these things we've been talking about today? Uh, well, all of the ones that are applicable, there's no Hawaiian air, for instance, on the, <laughs> what it is I'm trying to, to, to search, right. et cetera, but I, I'm not giving up yet. I haven't transferred to Etihad yet because I, those cancellation fees are ridiculous, but, uh, but there is part of me that's like, oh man, am I going to have to bite the bullet and accept that because they do have pretty good availability The oh boy, those cancellation fees absolutely stink. But if you need the availability, they do have plenty of flights available <laughs> it's just yeah. uh only to their own members more than 30 right. days in advance right right lufthansa uh, is next right lufthansa their first class awards only yeah. available it used to be two weeks but not anymore right well lately lately lufthansa has been blocking partner award bookings uh that are more than three days in advance all uh, partner of, awards are only first class only first class. Only first class. Only first okay. class. You can still book business further out. Lufthansa has always offered better award availability, I believe, to their member or always in recent years have I believe have offered better uh, award availability in general to their own members. But there's no really good ways of getting Lufthansa uh, miles if you're a U.S. Uh, you know consumer um, because uh, there's no transferable points that go to Lufthansa. Um, they do have a credit card, but you're only going to earn so many miles with that, right? I mean, I guess you could book one ticket maybe, but you know, you're not going to probably get multiple yeah. tickets out of that one. Yeah, bonus. yeah. So, so, so this one isn't a great <laughs> example of this category, but it's still, it still holds. Yep. Um, um, go ahead. Okay. So, so the last one in this category of uh, better award availability to their own members is British Airways and Virgin, both. Um, not only have better award availability for their members, but they guarantee uh, a good amount of award space on uh, all their flights. And uh, I've seen that time and again. The, the downside is they have really, really, both have really, really high surcharges on their flights. And so at best, I, like I think of it as like getting a discount off. So if you want to book a, a business class flight uh, across the ocean on one of these, um, you're going to be paying a lot, like think $700 or more probably in per taxes person. and fees. What's that? <laughs> per, per person. person. Yes, per person. <laughs> so uh, if you think of it though, as like using miles is giving you a discount, like Seven hundred or eight hundred dollars for a one-way business class flight. Hey, that's dirt cheap. So if you think of it as like whatever miles you have to spend is like a discount, then it feels better. Um, you can also, in both cases, lower the fees uh, by originating elsewhere outside of uh, the UK, flying through the UK to to the US. That'll lower the fees. There are far more opportunities to do that with British Airways than there are with Virgin, um, but there's a couple. Like, so for example, flying from um, Amsterdam or uh, Paris through London, uh, so you're flying Air France or KLM to London and then onward on Virgin, uh, the, the taxes and fees are still high, but they're not as high going mm -hmm. that way. Yeah, and I booked one from South Africa last year, and at the time it was about three hundred dollars in surcharges from South Africa to London to New York. So that yeah, was so that was reasonable, relatively very very good. 
Yeah. Right, right. So, and that was on Virgin Atlantic. So, um, so yeah, that, that's another good one. And I know you said that was the last one, but one more I'm going to add quickly here that just popped yeah. into my mind is Turkish, Turkish Miles and Smiles, which, you know, totally destroyed their award chart recently. Uh, well, it didn't totally destroy it. They mostly destroyed their award chart recently, but one of the bright ish spots in that is that they are releasing more availability to their own members than they are to other airlines. Well, I don't know. Is that a bright spot? Not necessarily a bright spot. But anyway, it's another example of a program where you may find awards available if you look through Turkish Miles and Smiles that you will not see through other partner programs. I gave an example in the post I wrote of a flight from Istanbul to Seoul, for instance, and that route seemed to be widely available at 65,000 miles, their equivalent of a saver award uh, through Turkish, but not available in either economy or business through any of the other Star Alliance programs. So there are surely going to be other situations like that where you'll find awards available via Turkish. Turkish, you're going to pay surcharges with Turkish too, but they're a little lower than actually the last time I had looked because I had looked at some flights a while back that were running in the lower to mid $300 range. But now when I looked at a bunch of them recently, just this last week, I was looking at a bunch from the US it was basically two, $220-ish dollars one way to Europe, uh, to, to Istanbul anyway. And on the way back, around 250 So pretty comparable with what you'd pay with Air France, KLM, Flying Blue, and slightly more availability. Now, on the U.S. routes, I didn't see a lot more availability yet, but that may have and flow and change over time. So it's worth taking a look at Turkish, which... We should mention that some of these will pop up in the search tools. Like if you're using a award tool or points, yeah, certainly points. Yeah, I don't know for sure on a word tool on that. Certainly points. Yeah, they'll show the so. Turkish uh, awards available. I think award tool will also. So this is one that you'll find through some of those tools. But but depending on which tools you're using, it's uh, worth keeping in mind that you may find something directly through Turkish. Yep. Yep. OK, uh, so another category of things to look at are last minute awards. So if if you've really struck out on finding something that you're really happy with, um, one option is to wait until a couple weeks before departure when space award space starts to open up big when airlines realize they're not going to sell those those seats and then they start releasing them like crazy, sometimes two weeks before, sometimes days before. Um, and so Obviously, that's a bad uh, approach to just wait and not book anything until two days before your 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 trip. If if you're, especially if you're, you know, you have to go wherever you want to go. Um, but what you could do is um, book a suboptimal, book whatever you can find with a program that allows free or cheap cancellations, and then keep watching for the things you really want to open up and and. Uh, that's something that, you know, in most cases w will probably result in good results. Yeah. Yeah. I do this all the time. And, and in fact, just I mentioned I booked a flight right before we started recording this and it was for my sister and I already had a different option booked for her and it's not going to be a free cancellation but a cheap enough cancellation of that one that when i found something a little bit better okay i was willing to go ahead and, and pay the cancellation fee on the original one because now i booked through american airlines miles and that'll be a free cancellation if i find something even better so uh, so I, I do that all the time and i'll you know kind of you know we talk about gardening your reservations right you gotta you know, tend to the garden and take a look every now and then and see if something better has opened up but i'll do this all the time book the you know, good enough refundable flights that will work if they have to, but, uh, you know, look to book something better later. And this is a big departure from the way I, I feel like a normal person books travel, right? Because most <laughs> yeah. people just like they go and they book their flights and they're like, what do you mean? Keep looking for a better option. Like I book my flights and that's it. I have my flights, right? But of course, when you book award travel, it just works differently. This is, you know, this is the way of, of doing it in order to get the best results. So you, you got yeah. to kind of shift yeah. the way you think about trip planning. Right, right. If you want to live really on the edge, um, United opens up really good awards, business class awards space from Hawaii to North America day of. So <laughs> let's say you're you're vacationing in Hawaii and uh, you're sort of agnostic about when you want to come back. Uh, <laughs> you, you might want to just like be ready to pack up, uh, you know, each morning check check the award space and then book your uh your 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 evening flight back to the states um in lie flat uh, luxury 
very good. Very. I did look for that, by the way, when I came back from Hawaii recently. And of course, my day, there was none of that. But uh, oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah. But but, you know, <laughs> certainly if you have the flexibility, you can enjoy some of that. But but even if you're not entirely flexible, I think that this strategy of looking for something better, you know, booking something good enough, they often, what's, what's the saying? The perfect is the enemy of the good or something along those lines, right? Like if you're holding out for yeah. that perfect flight, don't do that. Just book the flight that's good enough. And, you know, hopefully maybe you will get that perfect flight later on, but get something on the books that you can work to improve upon. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. All and right, the last so point, go ahead. Yeah, last point is sometimes cash is the way to go. Uh, you know, um, sometimes there are really good uh, cash prices available for what you want, and you might not have even thought to look for it because, especially if you're looking for business class international flights, usually those are so expensive. But every now and then you could luck out. Um, uh, a couple examples of how, and uh, Nick, I'll let you flesh out this first one, but. Uh, uh, often, uh, if you look for open jaw flights uh, from Europe to North America and then back to somewhere else in Europe, uh, the the pricing is often very, very good. Uh, and so that could be like two pieces of two different trips that you book there. And I personally just did something like that recently. Um, but also sometimes you just kind of randomly find great deals. And so I, I think I talked before about how I was uh, planning my trip to Cape Town and, and I didn't have good award flight options for the return. And I uh, looked at, uh, I had looked at Google flights for paid prices. I'd looked at some other tools I logged into American Express Travel, uh, and for some reason, they had a bizarrely uh, compelling business class uh, price to come from Cape Town to London to Detroit. So one stop, which none of the award searches I had found you know, had been one stop routes. And so that was great in itself, and it was at a very reasonable price. So um, you just never know what you're going to find. Yeah, totally, totally worth checking, taking a look now and then. And also, it can sometimes open your eyes to other opportunities. I, I can't even remember the route I was looking at the other day, but I was looking at a route and uh, maybe because I was comparing with the Turkish post, I don't know what it was, but I came across Mongolian. Is it Miat Mongolian, M-I-A-T? I don't know if they pronounce it Miat or some other way, but uh, but Miat Mongolian, for whatever route this was to Mongolia, it was like $1,000 in business class, long haul, where it was, I, I think, Frankfurt is what it is. Frankfurt to uh, Ulaanbaatar, if I remember correctly, I, I could be off on the city, but it was something along that sort of a distance. And it was like a thousand, everything else was in the thousands, but but this one was so much cheaper. It was like a thousand ish dollars. And uh, and I was like, is that a life flat seat? I've never heard of that airline because they're not uh, an airline you would normally book with miles. They aren't in any major alliance or anything. And I Googled and of course, one mile at a time had a review of their business class. And 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 basically, you know, what, what Lucky had said was that it, the soft product wasn't anything amazing because there's not really any competition for them, but it was a lie flat seat for a thousand bucks. And that was pretty much the going rate that it always was. And so if you can get that through a credit card portal for say, what, 70 ish thousand, less than 70,000 points, if you're using your points at one and a half cents a piece for business class, that's probably as good of a deal if you actually wanted to fly that route, of course, obviously, uh, as any award you're going to get. And so it's worth taking a look now and then because you may come across an option like that on an airline that you, maybe you're willing to fly or maybe you're happy to fly because you're like, oh, great, I can get to Ulaanbaatar from Frankfurt without having to connect anywhere. Uh, so it's worth taking a look at that, I think, for, for those types of opportunities, too, because sometimes we get so wrapped up in the award searches that we forget that there are some other airlines that don't belong to alliances, too. And they may have something that you know meets our needs for the the situation we're in. Yeah. Um, real quick, so I, I had a situation. I was looking for a return flight from uh, London to Detroit, and uh, it occurred to me, we, my wife and I have a global upgrade certificate. So what if we just book Delta Economy and apply our upgrade certificates? That would be great. But that one way flight was I'm going to make up some numbers because I don't remember exact, but let's say $2,000 for that one way. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe a round trip would be cheaper. And of course it was dramatically cheaper. Uh, so it brought it down to, I don't know, let's make up, let's say $900. And um, uh, and then I uh, remembered, well, we have a, we have a trip to uh, Lisbon uh, 
coming up uh, a couple months later. So uh, what if I do, um, what if I match the dates around the Lisbon trip and it stayed really cheap that way? Um, now in that case, it wasn't cheap if I returned to Lisbon. So it was only cheap if I returned to London. I tried some other return options. No normally that would be a good way to do it, but I booked the return to London and, and it, it's really easy to book. There's so many flights to Lisbon from there. Um, so I'm not worried about that at all, but yeah. So I was able to, you know, for much less than a one way book the round trip and, and satisfy two half, two halves of trips <laughs> with, yeah. with one booking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then the open jaw thing is a great tip for Europe because open jaw flights often do price less than and you have to just search around with different airports. Nice thing is that you can sometimes, uh, well, with Google flights, you can put in multiple different airport codes at once. So you could search to a bunch of different airports and see which one's coming up uh, the cheapest and then eliminate the more expensive options and add some other airport codes. So certainly something to play with and have fun with. And if you have not seen our our post about how to get great business class deals using Google Flights or how to find great business class deals using Google Flights, we will have a link to that in the show notes also because uh, that post, even though it's an older post, the general techniques of finding good business class deals with Google Flights are still there, I'm sure. So so that's that. All right. I think that wraps up our main event finally and brings us to this week's question of the week. This week's question of the week is unfortunately kind of as long as the rest of everything else today, but oh, no. I'm going to try to condense <laughs> it a little bit. Uh, the question of the week came in in our Frequent Miler Insiders group from Stephen, and you need some background. That's why the question is kind of long. So Stephen had a little bit of a story. He applied for the Wyndham Earner business card back in early December 2023. And when he applied, they needed copies of things. And sometimes Barclays does this, right? They'll ask for a copy of your social security card and a copy of a utility statement and this and that and you send them in and then they'll be like, oh no, it's too dark. We can't read it. You need to send it again. And you, so you go through that whole song and dance. So he went through multiple submissions of his license, bank statements, social security card back and front, only to be told again and again, they couldn't read the seal on it. Went up until February, like from a, an application in early December. Went That went on until February, being told that he had to keep resubmitting it. And then they said, okay, you got to get a new social security card altogether. And he did that. Uh, got a new copy of it somehow, I guess, and was finally approved, or so he thought. They told him he'd get the card in the mail in seven and 10 days, but it never came. So he called the fraud department again, and they said, okay, well, you were approved by the credit department, but not by the customer security department. Uh, there's three different departments that have to approve you first in order nice. to get approved. So the customer security department didn't uh, approved that yet. And so they went through a bunch of that and, and you know, he explained that it, well, it was a customer security person that approved me before. And so whatever, they asked to resubmit the social security card again for the fourth time. And so it goes back and forth a little bit saying, look back at the notes. We've already done this a whole bunch of times. Somebody already approved it. They found in the notes that somebody had approved it and said, okay, yep, put everything through. You're going to get the card in seven and 10 days. Once again, card didn't come. Weeks later, calls back customer security department again and they say that he needs to sub resubmit his social security card again because oh, they can't read this yet, right he's wow. like i've already been through this they went through the notes everything else and they just continued and continued to hammer no you, we need another copy of it we need another copy of it long story short and this was a long story that i'm condensing significantly <laughs> here eventually gets to another rep and another rep and blah 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 and they say okay we can see you have all this stuff but because you applied in early December, at this point, it's been more than 90 days and the application has expired. You oh, have to submit a new application. you got to be kidding me. <laughs> oh. So Stephen goes on to say, the irony of all this is that when I applied in December, the offer was 45,000 points. Now, the current offer on the Wyndham Earner business card is 100,000 points, a yeah. higher level of spend. So the question is, does he apply again? <laughs> What do you think, Greg? Are you asking me whether he did apply again? No, or he's asking. Good? He's asking, should he apply again? What oh would you do gosh. in that situation, Greg? Well, I mean, this and I'm skipping been a what crazy so he got thing. hung up on asking for a supervisor and blah blah blah. There's a whole bunch of other stuff in here. It's long, but I'm condensing. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, this should have been a what crazy thing segment. Um, and so I think you need to do it, Stephen, so that you can provide more fodder for future shows. <laughs> this is the craziest story, craziest application story I think I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, and, I mean, it is. If you read the whole thing, it, it was it was sufficiently crazy. And, you know, the reason I brought this up for question of the week is because uh, I, I like I found myself laughing going through because the time it took Stephen to type this up. I mean, like, I, yeah. I can't imagine how long it took to actually go through it all. Um, but I thought about how. You can really kind of take this one in two ways. I feel like sometimes people get offended quickly and they're like, oh, my goodness, I have good credit and, you know, I always get approved for stuff and they don't want to approve me. Forget it. I'm never going to deal with Barclays again. Right. And that's one approach. Another approach, though, which actually is what I said, if, if you're the kind of person that can kind of giggle to yourself and say, well, at least I'm going to get an extra 55,000 points from compensation for my time here, I might as well throw my hat in the ring again. What's the worst that's going to happen, right? Like, if you can laugh and and do that, then, you know, he may end up with 100,000 points, 55,000 more than he was hoping to get in the first place. So I think it's probably worth throwing your hat in the ring again. What I told him also is that it seems like much of this song and dance happens when you apply as an LLC and people who apply as a sole prop often a sole proprietorship that is often don't have to go through nearly as much of this, you know, like sending in documents and resending them and resending them. So I said if, if it's possible to apply as a sole proprietorship, that seems to be easier for whatever reason. Right, I don't know why right. it doesn't make any sense. And it's just anecdotal. So don't, you know, hold me to that. But that's at least, you know, what I've seen in anecdotal data points. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't think it's worth getting too wildly offended. Annoyed, yes. And Stephen, I'm sure, was annoyed by this whole thing. But at the same time, you have to kind of say, well, man, I, I got to accept the things I can't change here. And, and for whatever reason, I can't change Barkley's craziness, but I can take another 55,000 points from them. So I'd give it another shot. Why not? What do you <laughs> Do you, well, do you think do you think he should he should apply as an LLC again so that everything's consistent, or <laughs> or apply as sole proprietor and then risk them saying <laughs> your your applications were inconsistent? You're trying to uh, well, he's also got a sole here. proprietorship. There's nothing wrong with that. You can have multiple businesses. You can apply as a sole proprietorship, not under his his uh, primary business. So I don't I don't think well I don't know. I mean, who knows with Barclays? Who knows what they're going to consider <laughs> to be an issue? You're right. You're right. Yeah. There is some risk there, but I uh, I wish Stephen the best of luck because I I got the sense that he probably is going to give it another shot. Uh, but yeah, definitely these weird things happen sometimes, and I don't think it's worth writing them off entirely. Though Barclays, it is worth noting, can be really weird about that Wyndham Earner business card. I didn't mention in all of that that despite having excellent credit and going through all of those hoops. When he was approved, he was approved for a vast $1,300 credit limit. <laughs> and so he's fighting <laughs> over a card, you know, for like weeks and months uh, with a $1,300 limit that, you know, and Barclays has been known to give really weak limits for a lot of people on that earner business card for whatever reason. So, so yeah, there's definitely some frustration involved sometimes, but at the same time, if he ends up with a hundred thousand points, it's probably a pretty good win. So, and, you know, and the card that he wanted anyway at 45,000 points, it'd probably be a win. Although the amount of time he's put into it, maybe it'll feel less like a win for him, but a win for us. Thank you for the entertainment, Stephen. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, I was listening to that story thinking, oh my gosh, we, we love that card, but not that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you knew at the beginning that it was going to take all of that, it would be worth it right? right you know so right. certainly i would i would not uh go into it if if i knew that was all you know going to be the case but it's not always the case and so i would bet at least five dollars on the fact that if steven does this again it might just go through and be automatically approved so we'll see i'll be curious to find out yeah at any rate i, I, okay. I, th I think they're gonna ask him for his social security card again <laughs> <laughs> they might. Well, he's like, and it's like a bright, clear, brand new document. So the fact that they can't see the seal on it now, like, but what, like, is, what do I do? What, what else is there to do? I mean, they, part of the problem is they're using fax machines and that's, you know, oh like, my gosh. Like, yeah. So that, that's well, just also Stephen should not uh, take pictures of his social security card while at a dark Wyndham hotel. That might right. be part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Got to do it somewhere better than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go over, go over to the uh, holiday, the bright holiday and across the street take the picture <laughs> good luck with that good <laughs> luck with that
All right. Well, unfortunately, we are out of time for today. If you've enjoyed today's episode and you'd like to get more of this stuff in your email inbox each day or each week, you want to go to FrequentMiler.com slash subscribe to join our email list. You can follow us on all the various social media. Join our Frequent Miler Insiders Facebook group where you could find Stephen's question and find out if he updates and lets us know whether or not he gets the card. And if you have a question that you'd like to be considered for a future question of the week or a piece of feedback for our giant mailbag, you can send that too. Send it to mailbag at FrequentMiler.com. Bye, everybody. 